This is Off Planet Radio. Hey everybody, welcome back to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. I'm Emily Moyer and we're back with another edition of the Alchemical Insider Sacred Geometry Series. Steve and Chris are with me and we are going to discuss today in the first hour the uh, Flower of Creation, which I, most people will probably recognize as what is commonly called the Flower of Life, but according to their tradition at least, and in, uh, intuitively it actually sings, makes more sense to me, it is really called the Flower of Creation. So we're going to be having a teaching and a meditation on that in the first hour, and then in the second hour we're going to talk a little bit about Metatron's Cube and the Janissa Crystal. So Chris and Steve, mm. welcome back to Off Planet Radio. Thanks, Emily. Wow. That sounds like fun to me. Good to see you. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you guys. All righty. So people are really enjoying enjoying this. And um, everybody, if you haven't seen parts one and two, we've already talked about the Vesica Pisces and squaring the circle. So go check those out before you join us here for the Flower of Creation. Guys, take it away. Okay. Yeah. Right. So maybe we'll just start right off talking about why the Flower of Creation um, versus the Flower of Life. And so I guess the... Uh, the sort of tradition that we come from is mostly the, these uh, people from England, Keith Critchlow, John Michelle um, being the most prominent of them. Keith is still with us. John Michelle died maybe about three or four years ago, I guess. Um, and we studied with uh, Keith Critchlow at Chartres. Um, in and France. In, in France, Rock Cathedral of France. So the thing is that um, within this uh, particular uh, tradition and uh, Keith, like I said, it goes way back. He's been doing this for, you know, he's, he's about 80 now, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so they call it the flower of creation. And I don't know when or where it became, started being called the flower of life. It may have been through Drumvelo Melchizedek. I don't know. It may have been before that. I'm not exactly sure. Mm. Um, interesting. It, so that would be interesting if the, ch the change of name came with Drumvelo Melchizedek. Right, and I would yeah. say that would be a turning of things from from the right direction for some reason. Okay, from what I would from what I would term an open system to a closed system. Like I, yeah. So, like, if I mean, my this is just my a lot of this is intuitive in nature, but because of the scenes that I run around with in a lot of this sort of space in Los Angeles where there is a coming together of underground dance music scene mm -hmm. with uh, things like with the new age, which the sacred geometry aspects of the new age, like you see a lot of the art, sacred geometry kind of art and ideas being played around with in the Burning Man crowd and the uh, lightning in a bottle crowd and all that kind of stuff. And the way that I see it being talked about, it is, um, the symbols look like sigil magic to me as opposed to like um, uh, an explanation of the physics of the universe or, or the metaphysics of the universe and it the understanding uh, that some of these teachers these controversial teachers of sacred geometry uh, to me it feels more like an induction into a cult uh, so using sigil magic to indoctrinate people right. into a cult right. well articulate a cult of uh, a cult of um, belief of perceived freedom or belief in freedom but really it's just a slightly larger cage than religion um, and uh, the uh, authority figures in some of this present themselves in the same kind of guru fashion that yes, you see yes. in in yes, religion right. or in cults yes. around other technologies that can be freeing like yoga and qigong mm -hmm. and whatever it's all great when you're in control of yourself with it but when you're like come it's one thing to have a teacher it's another thing to have a guru right. you know or right. or a, a cult leader uh I, I i recognize that in some cases there is a difference between a guru and a cult leader but it's very hard to tell sometimes these days 
It is, right, and right. especially if you're innocent and just coming in, yeah. it's hard to have the discernment. Of course, guru means, it literally just means teacher in, in India, in ancient India, but well, it's, it means, becomes something else, of course. And, and so, yeah, so I guess I would refer to a closed system as let me show you, let me, gu let me, let me guide you along the way, and the open system as let me show you how to do it for yourself. Right, okay. right. And the okay. thing that always, you know, one of the things about, and I read John Blow's books when they came out, and besides this, he had this penchant for promising things that he never delivered, and this was yep. going to happen. But the other thing, too, was his Merkaba. I remember it was like, my Merkaba goes out 42 feet, you know, and your Merkaba only goes out 21 feet, you know. And right. Like, that, my that's, well, that's is bigger than yours. You know, and it's like, you got to be It's like saying big. my penis is bigger than yours. Is that well, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly, well, my cosmic it's, penis. It's, it's, <laughs> it, I mean, it, it's exactly that, though. Like, it's exactly, like, uh, the, the people that I look to as authorities or that have been good teachers for me, I don't respect them because they say they're the authority or because the public treats them like that. I rec respect them as an authority because through the time I've gotten to know them, they've been able to share knowledge with me through their passion and love of what they're talking about that mm -hmm. encourages me to understand what they know and then go out and seek other things beyond that myself, having nothing to do with them and, and to one day be able to come back and teach them something. Right. That, yeah. To me, that's a real yes. teacher, right? right. And, and, and I feel like the, with the gurus or cult leaders or whatever, then it's always this like, you know, that, you know, you have to keep coming back to them for more and more and more knowledge. That there's always something more that they know right, that you right, right, right. not only that you don't know, but that you can't know without them. Right. Oh, well, thank you. Scientology, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> we heard that before. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, the people You'll we learn never be from, good enough. The people we learn from, you know, um, basically, I mean, you know, these guys, you know, would go back and read the medieval texts about mathematics and you know and neoplatonic writings you know about number and number theory and so you know you guys are really steeped in in, in the tradition yeah as opposed and, to just showing up and they're just excited to share it it's yeah. not like they want to control you with it and i've never heard of them which makes me like them <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what right. I mean? so um it, it was interesting when i was just in sedona recently i was wandering around a shopping center there and there was a jewelry store that is now selling a um perfume by drum below melchizedek called oh, flower of life or the flower of my creation or so, flower of my life or some something like that it's a, it's a special you know i thought oh boy uh but um the, the other thing is is you know the, the thing with the sacred geometry is like a lot of people talk about how much they know about it but I have a friend, um, well, you guys might know her. I used to do some shows with her sometimes, Danny Katz. I used to do the show about the language with yeah, her. Dan, okay. she, um, so she said to me one time, she's like, I didn't realize until I really spent a lot of time with you about how, um, I don't know what she, I don't know how, how versed in sacred geometry you are, because I don't talk about it, right? But by the way, I make my choices and do my things and, 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 and like the way I just talk about other things that really have nothing to do apparently with geometry, then she sees how like, okay, like everything I do is sort of affected and reflective of it, right? Mm -hmm. and, and to me, that is more um, useful than going around telling everybody that I know this, I know that. And you know, most of the stuff I know is intuitive. So it, it might be right, it might be wrong, I don't know. But I think it's like a tool that can be used differently by every person. There's not one right way to and I think it's more important to teach by example down. rather than by yeah. uh, fiat. Right. Right. Yeah. And, um, That's what I think about authority. Like you have to earn my respect true. as an authority. You cannot just tell me you're an authority or I'm probably just going to laugh and walk in your face. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and, and as your, you know, as your, uh, well, what it is your motto is, you know, truth is out there. It's within you. Yeah. Um, you know, but this is a way of getting a sacred geometry within you. That's why we're doing a drawing class, not just, you know, a yeah. YouTube video where you can just watch the lines zip around and say, here you go. And yeah. we're encouraging people to actually do the drawings because that is how you get it within you. And, you know, like we said, we spend a week doing these drawings, getting more and more complicated with Keith Critchell. Yeah. And you're just, you're just altered when you're done with it. It's, you know, it's- Well, I can just feel like, just even that drawing that you guys have up there right now is lovely and very intricate. And I can feel the vibration coming off of it through the screen with you guys in Asheville. So I imagine as you're drawing them, you're really being, it's kind of, you know, my understanding would be like standing inside of a crop circle, right? Like when you're inside right. the crop circle, you're feeling, 
the energetics of those shapes, right? Like it's creating yeah. little portals mm -hmm. and vortexes of those shapes, drawing it, I imagine, having it sit there mm -hmm. and you're creating it in front of you is kind of a similar. Well, this is what's field. very compelling about the Genesa crystal that we'll be talking about and showing during the Patreon hour. Is yeah. That it's a structure that you can stand inside. It's a geometric yep. structure. And you do certain exercises that look like Tai Chi, mm -hmm. similar in their motion very deliberate movements and that is another way of getting it inside you. yep, it's, you know, yep. Live, it's a living geometry living geometry it has a, it has an actual frequency and vibration to it it isn't just pretty pictures although it's pretty pictures too <laughs> it's very satisfying to look at you know totally so we, you know we did this the other day out on our screened in porch and it's just been sitting there and when you walk out you open the door and you look at it, it's like ah we don't even have to do a show. People will probably just be happy yeah, to sit here and look at it. it. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you can get it better. So, All so right. to circle to circle back to the um to the flower of creation versus the yeah. flower of life. All right. So this is obviously the six petaled mm -hmm. six petaled flower. Yep. Now the flower of life in our in this tradition, not my really mine, um, is a five petaled flower. Okay. Right. And a four-petaled flower is called the flower of the elements. There are basically four elements traditionally plus space. Flower of the spirit is a three-petaled flower. And then uh, the seven-petaled flower is called the flower of intelligence. And there, there's, they've uh, in the notes for this show, that they've included some pictures of these. Right. So if you guys hit the right. link that will be included in the description box, you'll be able to look at some of these things that they're talking about. But my best um, understanding, because what, what this is, so the six petal flower is also, as you can see, the hexagon, and it's a it's the beehive. Yeah. You know, it's the beehive pattern. And yeah. the, the, the hexagon, the triangle, and the square are the only shapes that will, you know, fill up space completely by itself. And and you I think we talked about this before, you know, in my, my one time doing ayahuasca. Um, the vision I, I had was that the fabric of experience was a beehive, it was almost like a shimmering mm -hmm. moray beehive curtain. Okay. Yeah. So that's why, so this is almost like, it's almost like the warp and the weft of a carpet. Or this would be like the back, mm. the background of the carpet would be, this is the structure. So, so this mm -hmm. particular drawing, the six-sided, um, uh, the, 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 the hexagon is considered structure order yes. that's why we're going to talk, we're going to pull out the cube later which of course is the the m2 ultra and here's yeah, the of, of cube order right there so you can see that yeah so 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 this is sort of the, the flower upon the flower creation is like is like i said the the structure of everything and then the flower of life which is the which is the um the fibonacci sequence and also the golden mean re ratio which is how life expresses itself in you know through, through in the physical through those proportions mm -hmm. So that's why, in my mind anyway, is my best explanation of, of why the, the flower of life is actually five petals <laughs> and then the flower of creation is six petals. Okay. Um, and it could, you know, it could be, you know, whatever, parsing, who knows. But anyway, that's, well, but we're going to stick with that because it makes us a little different anyway, <laughs> right? You know, so, um, so we can start working on the drawing now, Okay. I guess. The hexagon, the Pythagoreans called the hexagon the form of forms. Hmm. And another word they had for it is your buddy Metatron. And the Metatron. Came back to Metatron later. We'll return to that yeah. in the next segment. And another um, uh, name that the, uh, the, the Pythagoreans had was called the unwearied anvil. Mm. And think about that, but that's kind of interesting. So it's kind of like talking about like the background structure and everything. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the structure that you can keep on, you know, keep on hitting, and 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 the uh, the manifestations come keep continuously comes through. Unwearied man. And well, well, yeah. yeah. When I see visions on the back of my eyes, it always starts with like a pole or a tether, and like what I call a disc, or it could be called an anvil. Mm -hmm. Right, and then it'll split into two, and, for, and and you know more and more and more, and and so it looks kind of like everything going around, like almost like an atomic structure or a moving flower of life or whatever, mm -hmm. and then it expands into greater and greater, you know, sort of hyperspace kind of landscape. Right. But always within that, I can find that original form, which was the disc or the anvil spinning around on the tether. Yeah, well, good for you, Emily. 
<laughs> That's pretty darn good. <laughs> so. I ain't never seen nothing like that. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I could let people see behind my eyes. Yeah. And make yeah. all the, He's like, so stingy. <laughs> oh wait, just wait. Elon Musk will have a have a toy for that. Before, before I don't want his toy. Play. Yeah, I, I only people I invite to see. You know. <laughs> yeah. So Chris is going to start by well, she's going to start by by reading yeah, the so invocation. Hopefully, if you're wanting to do this, follow at home on your own pad. Uh, name your drawing first at the top. Give it a title. Put the date so that you can refer back. It's always kind of nice, nostalgic. And then you start with- You people name. believe in time. <laughs> oh, timeless day. There we go. Outside of time. Right? Outside of time. That's my preference. Outside. I, 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 I like to think of myself uh -huh. as observing time. As a, you know, on, right? <laughs> uh, I guess in Sanskrit it would be on Adi. Kalo, no, Kalo. On Adi. Kalo, Kalo, Kalo is time. Kala, Kala is time. Anadi is, is, um, is without beginning. Oh. An, uh, mm. Timelessness, okay. timeless would be, would be on Kala. Okay. So, may we be guided by truth. May beauty be revealed to us, because it's always a revelation. And may it result in the good. All right. So, Chris is going to start. We've been doing the other drawing, starting with a horizontal line. Yeah. Usually start, start with a, like this. We're going to start the vertical line Not this time. Today. And for this, we're going to just start with a lead pencil because we don't really want this line to show. Okay. So it's just for convenience. So this is. Very um, good. So we so, can't. We can't. So we can't see this one, but there's a vertical line there, guys. So yeah, it looks they like. Let me draw it. Yeah. So then we begin with a, a circle with a fairly small radius because you're going to get, need to get like five across. Yeah. So we're going to aim for middle as best we can of the page. Get your compass mm -hmm. point. A little, we'll go little edge, bit. Yeah. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Make sure you get it in there firmly. Hold the top of your compass and scribe your circle. It's a little tricky with a marker. Now, so. I've been doing all the drawings with it on a table, and you have to realize this thing is not very sturdy. And so when you push in, you know, doing it on the flip chart, I, I have to give kudos to Chris for- uh, so, so you didn't make a horizontal line, you just made a vertical line. A vertical. Right. And then you went to the middle of it. Well, we just picked a spot. Any spot, okay. Um, what I tried to shoot for was sort of the middle of the page. Middle of the page, got it. So that the okay. drawing itself isn't going up into the lettering, which it might. Gotcha. It might. No. <laughs> we'll, no. we'll, we'll love you anyway. <laughs> so, so now you're going to draw circles above and below it um, on the line. So you have the line already. No, no, but you can, the other way. What do you mean the other way? They, they're um, what they're other way? tangential. Circle's gonna put it up against it, so you're gonna you need to put the point there and the marker on the top. Here. Mm -hmm. Thusly. Yeah. Well, we thought it would be hilarious one day to do like when we're doing our drawings to practice before these shows to just tape them and do all the outtakes because the, the arguments we get into. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, people would be. Like falling yeah. on the floor laughing. You could probably you could probably have an alternative media comedy skit. What are you talking about? I have no idea what okay. you're talking. So now you're going to do the same thing on the bottom. This is a very is it, in in the end. This is a very. But I love. Thing. There's something really awesome about a couple's most biggest fights being about sacred geometry. <laughs> <laughs> you call that a circle? <laughs> That's an ellipsoid if I ever saw one. <laughs> We're having way too much fun. Okay, so, right, so you're drawing those circles, and then again, you're gonna draw one on the top and one on the bottom. Okay. So we're getting five in a row. Five circles. So I'm putting my again, yeah. pen point on there and then finding the, up to the top. Okay, get that in firmly. 
especially on this because it just shifts all over the place. So I'm assuming in these arguments, it's kind of like the driving arguments, right? Wait, the one person, the one, the one person. So uh, uh, the, I was going to say these arguments when you guys are making these as soon uh -huh. as you like the driving arguments where the person who's in the passenger seat is complaining about the way you drive, but they never want to drive. Right. So oh, like the backseat driver. <laughs> right. So you're drawing the circles and he's sitting, <laughs> he's criticizing your circles, but he's not drawing circles. <laughs> you make a mistake, Steve? No, I made a mistake. I'm Steve really sorry. Mistake. I'm really sorry. We did this early. Okay. Right. So that it was supposed to be on that, right? And then to make That's it. That's right. You can still put him there. Oh, okay. You can still put okay. him there. All right. So, so are, we, are we supposed to have four circles or five circles? No, it was a. So I should have used. With the this. first circle, it should have gone here. Yeah. So go here and do what? Okay, that's you're, what I thought. You're going to do what, what you thought you were doing in the beginning. Because it should look like a vesica, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All righty then. This is there what you do when you make mistakes. All right, and then back to the bottom one. Here? This one? Mm -hmm. This? Right, and then the same at the top and the bottom of those circles that you just drew. The bottom? No, no, no. Here. This. Right there, okay. yeah. No, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> Where's that going? No. I would think yes. that this would make a vesica. No, it won't. Here. While you think about it. Give it some thought. Go ahead. That's not it, though. That's not it. I don't know why. I just, I just can't even understand my directions. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really sorry, everybody. All right. So, draw a circle above and below the front circle from the points where the top and bottom of the circle intersect the vertical. So we got that. You did that. You did that. So you should have five overlapping circles. So actually, what we did was we we preemptively put in extra circles. Right. The two, uh, the two, the two end ones are fine. So now, okay. from here, you're going to draw circles from these four intersection points of the circles, or the edges. So, of the so did we end up with the with the right thing, just in the different order than yeah, you? Yeah, okay. Pretty much. Pretty All right. Much. Yeah, we just okay. went the order. We hope. So, so they yeah. just so if we're if we're sticking with the driving analogy, they just rerouted but ended up in the same place. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Just to okay. Thought we were actually knew what we were talking about. No, oh, yeah. Yes, that, yes, so knowing knowing yes. what you're talking about is really overrated. Three, three four. One here? Yeah. So we're actually going to end up with a slightly larger. The thing with this particular drawing is that there's so many intersection points. And if you get it right, where they all, like I said, four or five circles hit the same point, here. it feels very good. Yeah. So, <laughs> so this is, yeah, so you got. So when you, you start off with five circles. You start with the one, one on either side, then one on the other side of that. These two top ones are superfluous for our drawing. But and the, that's it? One, two, three? Four. 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 And then four on the other side. Okay. But you can start to see that the petals starting to form. Yeah. With the with with the uh, with the drawing. Okay. So then I'm gonna. Can you just explain when you're going to make these circles? Where are you start? Can you just? I, I, yeah. I'm a little confused about where so you're starting. Where the from. circles inter? So we had these circles. Okay. And basically vesicas. Right. right? And so then this, where the yeah, circle? That's the vesica. So where? So you did, you did one, and then one on the, each of these points. So that's this one, then this one, and then one below that, and below that. So that gives you. So where's I'm just trying to figure out. So the starting point for for these circles is on the edge of. For which circle? Right. So the first those? row, the first row is a single line. Go, all right, okay, row, gotcha. And the second row, so here's one vesica, right? Yeah. So the second row is where the where the vesica points are. Gotcha. Okay. Is that now, helpful? Yeah. The so the the okay. other so they go keep going. See the other thing about. Um, okay, I can see now where it is. I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
the thing is that um, the the magic of the six pointed um, the hexagon is that so the radius of the circle is the same as this it divides also divides a circle into exactly six points so you could it's a perfect drawing i can show it to you when when chris is done with these four circles well there we've got our in other words flowers what this established right so what this particular way of um doing it gives it automatically gives you you know the six perfectly divided into six into six panels the circle yeah and what what happens is so if you can see the um chris's radius right is also the distance between each of the points on the hexagon yeah you see that okay. yeah so that so that's automatic so so you if you, you as long as you have a radius then you can just divide the circle into six using the radius too that's a, that's a whole other way of drawing the uh the flower of creation okay so now so now that you've got the next four so you started with five theoretically and then you and then you've got four and now you're going to do the next three okay of the original circles didn't you only ever draw four because you decided you went the wrong way i thought you were drawing five circles but it's only four circles so far they overlap here's one two three four and five we actually did seven okay the overlapping circles but the original seven. circles were four okay yeah right. so this is going to be a little a little off but it's okay going to, but it still be perfect because the thing is i mean I, you know you can take this and go out and in, add infinitum yeah okay it doesn't matter but for the gotcha for the aspects of this drawing so now you want to do another three on either side one, two and three at these juncture points here so i'm getting the point in nice and firm because if that point slides which actually it did up here and you see how i'm off i don't know if you can see yeah it. I, just that one little bit with, that one little lobe is a little narrower than the others yeah right. okay so that slipped just a little bit. I didn't have it in firmly enough. Because well, you're we, also standing up. Away. Well, yes, and you're, you're working on an easel. If people are working on a table, it's going to be a lot easier. And they'll be more focused because. Right, and this is going to give you a total of 19 circles. And so 19 is, a, is, is, is another one of those numbers that um, that that sacred geometers like something corrective isn't it and then here here and here well because we're talking about all right so one of the um the other one of the other things that that comes from this or right, you can start off you're starting off with the six around the one so six circles fit exactly around the one and i have these little ping pong balls to show you exactly how that works yeah okay so that's the six around the one um and then we're going to show how this goes into dimensions and so then when you get to metatron's cube it, it moves into the 12 around the one okay and 12 around the one is you know myth mythologically and in, in, in every spiritual tradition you've got you know uh, arthur and the 12 knights of the round table you've got christ the 12 disciples the 12 um imams around the other uh, imam and every every tradition has has a 12 around the one yeah 12 arhats of the buddha um it's you know so there's so this is the so we're going to show actually gonna get the point that there's a geometric correlate it's so already that, starting to look very cool isn't it yeah doesn't take me. I get excited. I, I get uh, my heart just gets always excited oh, whenever I so see geometry. <laughs> it's great, Emily. Yeah. So it's very satisfying. Very um, satisfying. Okay, so four new circles, and then um, that's it, right? Is so that's it for the, the, the circles. Then we, well, you can enclose it in in a circle. Okay, you want me to do that next? Yeah. So we're going to enclose this uh, into a, in a circle, sort of. Close up the space from the, mid, so from the midpoint. We're going to go to this. We'll just do this circle or all the way. No, no, just top circle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, top circle. This. Yeah. That, this, yes. Exit. Is that one? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not going to do that. So would you guys say I, this? This is one of the most 
uh, clearly identifiable patterns and designs that appears in art uh, artwork and in 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 uh, you see this on the you know um, tablets and on the mm -hmm. different um, I can't my brain is totally well, not there's a wall in yeah. uh, Egypt in one of the temples in Egypt. But I mean, you see this, like if you look at the inscriptions that are on the walls in any of these megaliths in South America, in Asia, and all these different places, they all have some version. Of, you see this in a lot of stuff. There's slightly different takes on it, but this is one of the most universally recognized patterns, wouldn't you? Right. Say. right. Yeah. And, and that goes back to being because this is this is the pattern of creation this is this and is for, you know, part of our experience and i have there it on myself go. as well oh, there you go look at you go yeah, <laughs> yeah. i've worn this ring for years yeah yep. yeah you know. <laughs> i'm just gonna this one is you're gonna reestablish her well i'm just gonna reestablish my old point okay. i don't know if i need it or not but so yeah. all right well from here we can um you can pull out a, another color we're going to show you how the how the kabbalistic tree of life fits on this Okay. Okay. All right. So for this, we use the ruler and another color. Well, you need. We're just putting the dot. Yeah. Yeah. Which you dots for now. Okay. Instructions, please. Right. So the first thing to put dots around is each of these. The six from the original. Okay. The All original right. so central what's circle. A good color for that. Maybe orange. Yeah, maybe something a little bright. Let's do orange. So here's the original just, so circle. This. You're right. So each of the points around that. So if you just look at it like it's a flower, a, a daisy or something, and it's going to have a center. Yeah. Now you know that that you know almost most flowers are are fives and sixes. Not the center. I said just around <gasps> it around it the center is the the center is god you can't put a dot on god okay right? it's not allowed all right sorry god okay all right then these two also yep so and we're doing this to make that so we can put the these two tree of life over the top yeah so we're going to show okay. you how the tree of life fits okay right on the right on the the, the the flower of creation that's it right so you can the lines where you can start off you want to put the lines and you can start off by doing the outside okay, we'll do that so we're gonna have a, so the thing is going to take a little while is that there are a lot of lines of yeah i just want to see force on I these use, things what color did i use like a green all right the so the uh, and I'm not going to get into you know and it's not something I really you know know a heck of a lot about but it you know I'm not going to get into which of the you know which one is which Sephiroth and what they mean this people can true. you know look that up for themselves that's pretty gonna go with a small it's name. pretty uh, you know pretty basic um, at least you can find the stuff let's see if this shows up no no so another thing about um, about six that's very interesting um, that made the Pythagoreans giddy was that one plus two plus three equals six and one times two times three equals six. Yeah. You know, they liked all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, again, it's the, the, the six directions of space and also, uh, well, we're we'll gonna pull the cube out of here in a second. And we do have a little uh, a little bit of gematria to play with. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like with the, um, the way they say, if you're making ancient statuary, you know, the ancient mm -hmm. statues of the divinities, right? The idea was if you got the proportions correct, the, the divinity would inhabit the statue. Yeah. You know? Just what, speaking of statues and what, and it, all these giddy things, I want to, um, these will be included in the description box, but I also, I want to take a minute and show you some of these uh, 
pictures and drawings and stuff that they've included. So let me share the screen here with everybody. And it is right here. And very um, popular in crop circles too. Yeah, so you got, here's the, uh, you know, up here we have the instructions on the drawing okay. and whatnot. And then uh, some of the gematria that I think you're gonna about to get into, but here's some of these sort of ancient, the kind of structures and depictions that I was sort of speaking of before. And right. I think the top one, yeah, that top one looks like Da Vinci, and I'm not absolutely yep. sure if they didn't get anything up, but that's got to be Da Vinci. Right. Yeah. So and this is kind of what I was talking about when I said that you see these kinds of patterns on the artwork in all different countries and whatnot. Yeah. What are the? What, yeah, where those are, are tile works in 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 Roman. Yep. Um, in uh, you know old Roman uh, villas, things like that. Yep. And there's the crop uh, circles. There's some crop circles. And they threw one in a, uh, in a, in a triangle in the, what's called the, uh, by the Pythagoreans is the tetractus, the one, two, three, four together. Ah. Okay. And then so we got those here. two, and then one across uh, here. And then here's some of this, what they're drawing right now, which is the tree of life over the, the flower of creation or the sixness, right? right. Yeah. Oh, and then we see that in the crop circle too, yeah. Is that it, or isn't there another one like here? Yeah, there's um, this. I think you got um these two. Oh, these two? Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, the lines between them they keep on showing up different everywhere you go. But so I think, but they think this is going to be uh, kind of enough. So yeah. So there's that. Flower of life over the the sorry the the tree of life over the flower of creation and then here's some more uh, tree of life right. crop circle right and so the the middle the yeah we have to do that well as like I said they're all different okay. so I, but I think that's kind of enough to get the get the idea mm -hmm. you can you know if you want to put the ones across here to here and there. And put in that triangle. I think a that, triangle. That okay, because I'm feeling like that yeah. works it. Mm -hmm. Well, the idea is that that each of these aspects, um, you know, and how they're connected and, and intertwined, and through this particular shape and the shape of the uh, the center of the original circle that Chris drew is uh, is the, the highest one, uh, Doth and Gnosis or knowledge. Uh huh. Um, so and that's generally kept without a dot or kept empty or sometimes uh, ah. one we have there is, it has the dot, but the crop circle doesn't have that. Yeah, one. And this one up here doesn't have the dot. I see what you're exactly. talking about. Yeah. Exactly. Because, mm. yeah, because it's, because it's, it's, you know, it's beyond. It's ineffable. Exactly. So, so at least, so anyway, you've got an idea here from, uh, from, from the drawing that, um, you know, of how this fits. Yeah over and exactly over th this this structure the tree does that created. show up okay uh, it, i mean it's faint we can see the, the the basic the basic outline i think when we're done with the drawing if we if we can pull back forward the one that you had previously done it was easier okay. to see on that yeah. so let's keep going with this but when we're done we okay. can kind of use the other one to show to kind of highlight all of the distinctions right. to people yeah, well so the next thing you want to pull out then which is which is again fairly easy is 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 the cube so this is like really our first time that we were going to go from you know go from the two dimension to the three dimension right so um you have to really you just basically first week first you have to draw the hexagon on the larger circle okay. so pull out like a maybe a red or something uh all right that's good i'm gonna get a red oh this orange is good this is a good one so where are we going so you're going to go from where the points where the six outer circles so you, in other words you're going to there's another so there's a wider hexagon so like hexagons within hexagons Keep within your hexagons. Eye on you. so you're going to, yeah so yeah. you're going to draw the hexagon around the larger circle all right so what i'm trying to do is line it up so that these curves points have a straight i'm not line. sure that's right but not not to where it, i guess we're kind of oh it's going to come in yeah. Okay. It's going to be oh, like, it's going to follow that are. line. Okay. You, you should be able to follow those two lines. These crossing points, these juncture points. Right. So again, yeah, you kind of know you get things right when the, you know, when you're, when you're moving across, 
these, uh, these, these junctions. You know, and all these junctions, like I said, you, you're feeling them inside yourself and these are all, you know, alive in a certain way. Yeah. And this is, I'm thinking it's like uh, carpentry where you measure twice and cut once. Yes. So you really make sure that you've got your ruler set accurately as best you can. It's easier for you guys at home drawing on a flat down when you're with your Just table. Yeah. Flat and, table. We hope, and we hope, you know, we hope people are. I hope so. You know, um, I'm trying to see if I have any other uh, things. So what we're doing is we're, we're, we're going into a third dimension. We're pulling a cube out of here. And of course the word cube triggers lots of people. Mm -hmm. So if people don't like the word cube. We can, we can use the word hexahedron. I, you know, it, it's one of these things like people are, oh, the cube is bad. Saturn is the cube and they have a yeah, black it, cube and, you know, in yeah. over in the Middle East and whatever. And for me, I, I, I so, uh, you know, I know we're going to get more into Metatron's cube in the second hour, but the, I'm very attracted to cubes. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's the earth element, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's, it's it earth and it's, and it's, you know, the ultimate structure and you can't, you know, can't do a thing without structure. Well, Guruma used to say, a thing in itself does not exist. Guruma was our yoga teacher. She was a woman from Calcutta. Yeah. And everything exists in concert with something else. Yeah. So a cube in itself is not good, okay. bad, or... Yeah. It, is, it okay. simply is what... It's like anything. It's like people who think that, like, that it's dangerous to look at certain information. No, the information is just information. It's whatever you do with it that can be dangerous. Yeah. Intentionality. Yeah. That's the nature of I, reality. What I love about all of these sacred geometry drawings is if you look at them from different angles and different perspectives, you see shapes that you don't see from the other angle or the other perspective. Yeah. And yeah. There's all these shapes within shapes and designs within designs and what one person sees, the other person sometimes absolutely cannot see. Like yeah. I have this geometric tile in my bathroom and it's a, uh, to me, it looks like a series of angles that create like uh, boxes and cubes that are very geometric in nature, right? But the guy who was installing the tile, when, when I was telling him I wanted to be, he kept insisting, but I'm trying to show the flower. And I was like, well, I don't give a, you know, what about the flower? I'm looking for the cubes. He couldn't see the cubes. He could only see the flowers. I could see both. I could, the lady who, who helped me with the design in the bathroom, all she could see was cubes. The guy who put the tile in could only see flowers. I could see both. I was interested in setting it up in the way that the cubes were more highlighted, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But it, it's so interesting that some people can really only see it one way. All right. I'm just doing yeah. this to pull out the design for the eye to catch but, it easier. But maybe you Very can good. see the. But can you see the cube now? Yes. Pulling out of out of out of this drawing. So of course you can do that with any hexagon by just drawing through the middle. Yeah, it's making me feel like, why didn't they give us sacred geometry patterns for our light bright when we were little? Why did they just give us stupid stuff like houses and trees and cars? I want, the, I want a light bright that does this. If we had this in geometry class, oh. it would have made so much more sense rather than sitting around, you know, coming up with proofs and... No, you know, dumb, yeah. I was great at geometry, but that, this is what I was looking for, you know? Euclidean geometry just shattered my brain. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. They put me in what they called the clunky corner in high school geometry. <laughs> and if you were a member of the clunky corner, it meant that you could just take that class as a study hall. Yeah, and you didn't have to participate anymore because you were a loser. So this was my revenge when we moved down here and we got into this sacred geometry group that I got good enough at it that we could go to Shark Cathedral with Keith Critchlow and I yeah. came up with a world-class geometer yep. doing his drawing. <laughs> and, and, well, who, who, knew that you, who knew that all you needed to be a genius, Chris, was for the geometry to be sacred as opposed to just That's geometry. Right. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. That's a good point.
<laughs> so there. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, soccer lies everything. Sacred gardening. Mr. Sacred, Hannum, my <laughs> sacred sacred vacuuming the floor. We, you know, How's that? Exactly. <laughs> you guys do sacred vacuuming? <laughs> yes, I sacred vacuuming. Sacred sacred dusting, not too often. Right. right? Looks so, like you got a fair amount of tchotchkes in there. I can see how the dust you oh, can get. Well, that's yes. our little Turkish wall. We do wall. like our tchotchkes. That's yes. our little Turkish wall behind us. Yeah. You, you guys have Tur <laughs> You guys drink Turkish coffee when you're sitting looking at your Turkish wall? Uh, oh, Turkish tea. We haven't. We haven't. I love yes. Turkish tea. Have you ever had Turkish coffee? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh it's oh, delicious. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's okay. so good. Yeah. 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 So that makes it pop a okay. little bit more. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that's... It's really basically the just the drawing now. If you want, Chris wants to start with doing what you did with the other ones with the cross pieces. Okay. So so this is really the basic flower of creation drawing. And again, you know, if if you wanted to go out, you could just keep on going through all these nodal points and keep drawing circles. Keep drawing circles. As as, as far as as far as you would like to. So the other thing that Chris would like to show, because again, these are these are all I don't know, lines of force. I don't know if that's the right way yeah, to put yeah. it. Mm -hmm. But, but there are they are lines of force, lines of energy, or something like that. They're all depicted in this. So um, Chris is going to do a little I have one of these drawing really... along that. And then maybe while Chris is doing that. But don't leave me well, to my own devices. Well, you just draw Make the... sure I put them in the right place. Well, you're, going, here? you're, just, you're just going out further. Yeah. All right, so I'm just going to start here. Right. Right. Okay. And I got one of these really fun gold pens. Yeah. So it's really nice. When They're you... really fun until you get it all over everything. Well, that's why I keep a bottle of rubbing alcohol <laughs> around and I clean the ruler off. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Because it makes the ruler very sticky. Because it's like paint. So, right. Yeah. So she's drawing paint. diagonals to, right through the petals. And while she's doing that, maybe I can bring in a little bit of the gematria since we managed to get a little gematria. Yeah. Every into every. Um, is into it? There's a. Is it? Do you, so you guys call it gematria. Some people say insist it's gematria. Some insist it's gematria. I don't. Well, um, I don't know of a soft G in Greek. Ah. Uh, okay. So I would. That's why I would say gematria. Yeah, okay. So it looks, but to, like for an English word, it looks like it would be gematria. Yeah. You know, and, and, you know, that and like pe people butcher chakra for yeah. to, to no end, and chakra. I understand it. Chakras and things like that. Yeah. It's not SH, it's chak. But anyway, chak. yeah. Yeah, it is interesting. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know, maybe I can write up here a little bit, or is it going to get me away? Go ahead. I'm just going to write a little bit of, of the of the um, of the gematria because because it, it's because first we're dealing with sickness 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 it was the famous um, tongue twister the six the six sheep six sheep sick what it's an old tongue twister I never heard that so one. so the dump the uh, the number six hundred that must be a really old uh, really old tongue twister Steve. <laughs> I think you made it up. I think so. So, so I thought this is interesting. I think it ties, it ties in to this being the flower of creation. So the number of six, the 600 is, is actually equal to cosmos. Okay. In, in gematria. In gematria, the word okay. cosmos in Greek, which is- Oh, interesting. Which is with a K, of course. Um, then if you do 600, times the square root of two, it comes out to be the macrocosmos. Just, I don't want to move this too much. And 600 times the square root of three equals the microcosmos. Oh, interesting. In terms of words, that's what the numbers equal. Right, right. Wow. And, um, um, and this is this is this would be eight forty nine. 
and this would be 1415. So that's, a, you know, because because that all hooks into, of course, as above, so below, macrocosmos, microcosmos. Yep. Um, the microcosmos being the human, being the human. Okay. So um, the relationship of the cube. So if 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 one of these side areas, right, the area of any of the six sides of a cube. Yeah. Um, if that, so if that was to equal 1415, right, which is, which is the macro, which is the, um, sorry, the microcosmos, um, the volume, I'll just write V, volume, the volume would then equal 50, 53,200. And the uh, the side the side area the area of sorry yeah the side the, the area of um, sorry one side would be fourteen this would be one side would be fourteen fifty and then the total the total side area the total sides would equal um, eighty four ninety. Which is you know six times fourteen fifteen right six okay. sides one side is that so so to see how that works so five thirty two it's a little small it, it, yeah. for, for people to see I can go back to that thing that I was well it's on it's on the notes yeah too. I'm just gonna go back so people can see real quick All right. while we're doing it that it's right here uh, right. right up here there we go. So the five, so there's 532 then, because it doesn't matter how many zeros you have after something with gematria. The 532 now equals the the alpha, and yep. the 849 equals the omega. Yeah. So, so you have the alpha and the omega, which is the beginning and everything and everything else in between, you know, and that's one of the um, the the Christ I am sayings. I am uh, there are I forget how many. Uh, seven I am sayings in the in the in the, the Gospel of John. One of them is I am the Alpha the Omega. Yeah. You know, I'm this, that, and the other thing. The way, the truth, the way. So, and then this this um, fourteen fifteen comes out to be the God Apollo. Excuse me. Excuse me. So, so the so 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 again, the um you know the whole the cos the, the cosmology works with the with the numerical with it with the uh, with the geometry with the math of the geometry and it all. Um, ends up working in with with the names of the gods, the name of the various um, deities, things like that. Now, what Chris is making now is all, is is called the net. And I also want to point out that please notice that I did not go over my existing lines that yeah. I have drawn in shapes. So you don't want to obscure them. Just so. Over them. So what is this net? Because when we see. Okay. Uh, people's renderings or drawings of the matrix or the construct. We see stuff like this. Uh, when you do a like have a psychedelic experience, sometimes you can perceive that there's this net out there in the sky above you or in the room, but whatever. What is this? Right. According well, to the tradition that you understand well, from the geometry. Right. Well, according yeah. Well, starting off according to this, and um, so so the net goes way back, and there are um, goes back to Orphism. In uh, in ancient Greece, and, and of course in, in ancient India, there's Indra's net, and Indra's net where is a jeweled net of Indra, Indra, which is a description of the fabric of reality. Where funny that that sounds like internet. Indra's net sounds oh, like Indra's internet. Net, yeah. yeah, well, there is. In fact, yeah, huh. I think my, one of my friends is still on uh, Indra's net. On it was a uh, you know it was, really? a, it was something like that. Don, yeah, 
Anyway, well, I mean, um, think, if, if you recall back, I don't know if you've ever read these quotes or these clips, but people like Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak talked about when yeah. they were creating their systems and really mm -hmm. like working on things related to the internet, they modeled them after their psychedelic experiences and the way that both visually off, off of their psychedelic experiences, but the way that mushrooms and vines hub underground, right? The way that there's yes. like areas where there are hubs and then there's, and then things branch out into different directions. Exactly. So both the structure of the internet and the, like the, just the psychedelic aspect of the, the I mean, the internet itself is a very psychedelic experience, right? The way we, the way we look at things is similar mm -hmm. to the way things appear Oh, when you're in the psychedelic state. And you know that there's nothing new under the sun. Nothing so everything new. everything comes from something pre-existing. Yes. And then in, in the yoga system, there's, um, they recognize the state of, well, there's manifestation, which is prakriti. Uh -huh. And then there's pure consciousness, pure awareness, which is purusha. Uh -huh. But on the female side, on the prakritic side, how that comes into manifestation that behind that is called mula, M-U-L-A, mula prakriti, mm -hmm. which means root. So yeah. the root, so that which you cannot see, but which is informing all of yeah. physical manifestation, all of physicality, yeah. what informs it and brings it into form is mula prakriti it's unseen it's under the ground yeah, it's under sometimes ground. pure potential yeah mm -hmm. or almost like plato's ideas mm, almost, similar almost but similar. Well, I, I look at that also just in terms of the way that they have gone about creating culture right they look at things that are happening these interesting things that are happening in the underground space and then they choose what they want to push up into uh, the above ground, and then they mold and form that and change that from what the root intended it to be, maybe. But it, our culture is built on the exact same thing. Does that work? Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that the language that's... is a little different. Yeah. yeah. Well, then that, well, I'll just go back to the tradition anyway. So you can start to see, you know, the, the, these ROMs, right, forming the net. Mm -hmm. All right. right. So, so going back to saying so that, just that, say there that, was, that that's a ROM, that's that this a, is a ROM, a rhombus, a rhombus, a rhombus, right? okay. Rhombus. Okay. like a harlequin. Yeah. So, and this, and this, this ROM, as you can see, is the ROM that fits inside. The yep. Recipe. I can see it. Yep. And, and also, and then, you know, then it's like expanding ROMs and things like that. You can keep on going. And they're all vesicas, which are all root square yep. root three. So they're all little microcosmoses within, within that, connected by nodal points. And so, yes, yeah, so you have the, the jeweled net of Indra, which is very much like a hol hol modern hologram discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Where, where every aspect reflects every other aspect. Yep. Um, as Chris said before, our uh, yoga teacher, Karani Anjali, would say a thing in itself does not exist. You know, we're the ones, it's only our mind that separates them out, but everything is totality. Yes. And, and everything is dependent on everything else. So that's the net. And there was an ancient um, Orphic poem that's now lost called the net. They only, there's only references mm -hmm. to it. Um, and then there's a whole other uh, geometric thing that works this, this. Uh, it, it's mostly known through the, um, um, through, through, there's, a par um, there's a New Testament parable about um casting the net and catching 153 fishes mm -hmm. right and that's actually a redoing of an older myth having to do with zeus but that uh the christianity incorporated um but again there's that 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 net is the reference again and the 153 also has these sort of geometrical uh and and and, and gematrial uh significance yeah. um but basically the net is going back to that fabric so I, I think th th so there's there's the no so this is the fabric is of space and time that our reality is made up made up of basically this net that is sort of mm, overlaying or underlaying these forms yeah. and shapes that are the junctions of what everything is made of yeah it does that make any sense that we're yeah, talking it's about. holding it it's holding it all together i'm not explaining it terribly well but you know, it's it's this like I said, it's it's the fabric. There's the warp and the weft, 
you know, and, and then, and then there's the, you know, then there's the, 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 the colors of existence that come out yeah. through it. You yes. Know, that, that, that make, you know, each moment. And, you know, it is the colors that make each moment. I would agree with you about that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I like the, I like the, what you said about the jeweled intersections of all of that stuff, because that is, that's kind of where the sparkle and the glow is. Um, how, 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 just, just curious, how, how are we doing here? We're coming up on the hour. We can keep going a little bit. I'm just, I have to go to the bathroom terribly. Well, we're, <laughs> well, we're I think we're, do you want to finish it? We're kind of done. We, I don't know what we have else. Well, to I was just going to do that shading in of what we had on the other drawing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to take a quick so, break? Let, uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit pause. Hit okay. I'm going to hit pause real fast. and I'll be right back. Hey, Thank guys, sorry. Know. Sorry, I had to run out to the restroom really fast. I couldn't wait. <laughs> Chris has continued this drawing. Is... Chris has continued drawing lines, and Chris and Steve have continued to argue right. over whether there's enough lines or not. So right, kind of, kind <laughs> of, right of, back I, to the program. Yeah, it's kind of ironic that, that this is like the least structured of all our... <laughs> programs and yeah. we, it's, it's the drawing of structure and order <laughs> well we um, are all, we are anarchists here steve yeah so. i know i know i have a i certainly have a, certainly i certainly have a taste for anarchism well, yeah people can see our achilles heel now you know how about that that's all right you know you get tired of being perfect after a while so you can <laughs> I, I would have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> So, so what Chris is doing is doing the lines, really going through all the petals, and what and that is. So, so that's showing again th- these lines of force, these lines of, um, of of really of movement amongst things. Could these oh, be what? like? Could, would these be something akin to like ley lines or telluric currents or yeah, channels or meridians or something exactly. like that? In fact, more than you know, because, like, okay. well, maybe not more than you know, but there are actually, yeah, so there's a, like a particular earth grid line, and I'm sure this connects to this, and they're called Hartman-Curry lines. And I've a, heard of them. Third, third, is there a third one? I can't remember the name of it. But basically, they, they, they are a, a grid with what they, approximately about four or five seven, feet, seven feet apart. Seven feet apart, and you can douse, and if you're dowsing for them, you douse, they open up, douse, and open up. And, and then there's another one that goes on the angle. So it actually, the earth is covered with a grid looking very, yep. very much like that. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah. And uh, you douse for that. And, and the, the thing with that is that you need to um, be careful if there are crossing points within your home. You, uh, you, you need somebody to douse. And there are correctives. Like for example, if you can see where it comes into the wall, you would put 16 dots on the wall where it enters the house. And you don't want them at certain places, like for example, um, you know, on your bed, crossing okay. somewhere on your bed. Too much energy there? Well, it could, or, well, it depends on what's being carried in. So if, 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 if something detrimental is being carried in along those lines, and like you can, you'd have to douse. electricity or something. Yeah, electricity, things like that. And if they cross, you know, you, you, if you play, it's a place where you sleep, you know, you, you're likely to end up with something happening at that part of your body that's over that. Interesting. We unfortunately had a, we didn't, before we knew this, we actually had a parakeet when we had the farm uh, 20 years ago. And um, we had the cage, uh, the bird's cage someplace. And even though it was, it had the run of the house, um, you know, it stayed in this one particular spot, which we later found had one of these crossing points, but we didn't realize it. And the bird ended up with a tumor. Ah, and and um, yeah, and actually, and the bird and the bird died on uh, 9/11. on nine eleven two thousand one. Wow, we wow. Were... Okay, this is I have a, I have a, a weird question. So, uh, it, I think we've talked about this before. I don't think you guys have seen the TV show Fringe, but in oh, in yeah. Fr- oh yeah, no, we we've gone through it. We've seen the whole thing. Yeah, the whole we're thing. On second, we're on a second run. Okay, good. So you know when in the last season when they're going into the pocket universe that's in that uh, dilapidated apartment building and they're having to like step in a certain pattern and then step in at an angle. Would these lines you're talking about be the basis from which somebody could theoretically create or enter into 
a pocket universe verse or a, create a space that exists right outside of visual perception to everybody else that has a different law of physics than what's here. Would, would the junction of these po points be what you're talking about? Well, you know, I can't, I, all I can say is it's possible. Okay. No, because I, I, I haven't done it. Because you're not Walter Bishop? But why not? And I'm not, <laughs> I'm not Walter Bishop, nor, nor, am I, nor am I Peter holding, you know, the, the world's apart. <laughs> you know? Um, but that's a really interesting question because, because like, if, this is, if this is somehow akin to the fabric, of reality then well even remember when peter put the technology in his head to make him like the observers he started seeing everything with a grid over it like that right and if you recall in that last season when olivia is trying to explain to that um she went out to that far like sort of uh commune to get that large magnet and there was an african-american woman right. there right. and they're talking and she she's very hopeful and at this point olivia is demoralized and she says the reality is just numbers and the observers are better at math than we are and it makes me you know to me the observers are the obvious right. extension of what if of, of the the kind of experimentation that walter and walter bishop and william bell were doing right yes. so yeah and, and one of the things that most of the people that i've spoken to that have you know significant awareness or memory of their, their stuff they were involved with with projects and stuff we all talk about sacred geometry programming right so mm -hmm. uh, sacred you know now it could mean a lot of different things but it could also in some ways just literally be an imposition of some of this grid over reality that people are able to see and bend time and bend reality with because that's essentially what the observers were doing right. i mean the observers are what happens if we get too carried away with ourselves in technology and to me MK Ultra was one of the first real examples of, of humanity getting carried away with what they could do. Well, and my and, and the thing I could add on to that is because you, I think you have to understand if the observers are better at math or better at numbers, you have to understand that better at numbers for a Pythagorean would be to understand the qualitative aspects of numbers and the, mm -hmm. and the spiritual aspects of numbers. Mm -hmm. Not, you know, so whereas Pythagoras said everything's numbers and, um, you know, um, uh, go ahead. Does that up? show up? I, I can see the yellow. It, it, it's, uh, it's tough to see, but it is, it, it, it does show up. All right, I'll Maybe give it a better color then. So, I mean, but I think isn't yep. that the ultimate oh. point is that the observers only understood the quantitative aspect of numbers. And the reason that the humans were essentially finally able to beat them was because they understood the qualitative aspect mm. of numbers. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. That sounds good. Right. Well, because, because right, because uh, they, in the, the, in the, within the context of the show, they had lost, they had enhanced their, their mathematical ability, cognitive ability, at the expense of emotion, the expense of any emotion, That's right? Yeah, and, and 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 any other deeper kind of knowing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so. Yeah, and then and then also thank you because we got we got turned on to Orphan Black too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Also, where also there's a big nod to Buck Buckminster Fuller and Sacred Geometry with one of the clones is really into that. Maybe having. What were we like season three? I guess I don't know. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Which well, clone? Which that, the one who the one who the, she has dreadlocks and she's um kind yeah. of a Is scientist. A, yeah. Oh, really? yeah the DNA. Okay. Yeah. So Chris, Chris is pulling out the um, the star, and of course the six pointed star. The six pointed star, which of course is another image that uh that that gets a bad rap yeah or, yeah. or a good rap or depending on you know depends on how you on use it and there's on, people on the, yeah. everything is that way but um yeah i did a little try to do a little research on on the star david was only really um adopted by the zionists in the late 1800s mm -hmm. and it's not you know so much, you know, uh, you know, a real biblical symbol or something like that. Though, mm -hmm. you know, there it's obviously an old symbol. It's the interlocking um, male triangles, and the, it's, it's the male and female. Male and female. Yeah, there's a, there's some cool in some you know uh, ancient texts. There's 
some cool um, like pictures of the Star of oh, David me, that have to do with quick, male and female. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna quickly show you something that that everyone knows. So we're not oh, nice. we're not much. But this is the uh, this is a, a painting Chris did, which everyone yeah. knows. It's called the Sri Yantra. Yeah, I love it. Right, and that's just really this um, done big yep. time. Um, and this is a really, really hard drawing to do. It's, it's like very it's like it's not like it, it's you. Basically, they keep the secrets of how to draw this within families. Yeah, like that. I've but um, so this is a painting that that Chris did a number of years ago. We're not we don't do a lot of paintings, but I thought this that one's one pretty cool. Great. Yeah. Yeah, came out really good. There you go. Six point very four. good. All right, we did it. The grand finale, the fireworks. The grand finale, excellent. Yeah. So can you pull forward the one you showed in the beginning that just because it's a little easier to see the tree of life on the, uh, the one that the original drawing that you did yep. so yeah. that people can sort of see all the points and all the spots. Actually, maybe it isn't, maybe I just, yeah. It, maybe it's not that much easier. Actually, I think you did a really good job at the other one. Uh, there, it's, uh, can you, oh, you, yeah. You guys talk so the picture gets big. Yeah, so here's the, so here's there we the, go. again, so, so yeah, just to finish up, here's Maybe the, we could pull here's this the circle. Let me see if I can move the. Yeah, we don't need to see the flower of creation writing up top. There we go. Can you see it a little yeah. better? Yeah, really nice. Yeah, so again, yeah, so there's the, the energy of the sickness, then there's the original circle, there's the basically God, and um, here's the tree of life around it. Um, and then you can still see the the six. So we're pulling a third dimension out of the two dimensions. And um, it's awesome. Know. It is. I can sit there and look at that all day. <laughs> I just love the vibration of that. It feels it's nice wonderful. to look at. Maybe, maybe yeah. Did you try to do any of the drawings? Yeah, I've done some oh, of the drawings. Yeah. Good. good. Well, maybe, maybe we can have a fundraiser for All Planet Radio by <laughs> auctioning off the drawings. The original. <laughs> <laughs> Get your very own original. The drawings are really cool. <laughs> well, you know, Keith Critchlow always said, you know, it's wonderful to have these things up around your home so you live with them. I want to, I want, I, I would love to get some, I would love to get some really cool geometry art or even have somebody come in and paint right on the walls. You could do it, Emily. Yeah, you can do it. You yeah. Do it. Just need a big ass compass and get on the walls. That's it. Well, you, that, you can do it like that. Or the other thing is you can also just, they have those transparencies. You can, can just print out and then put them over the wall and then paint over that. Right. So, yeah. 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 All right. Alrighty, so, so guys. That's it for this one. Thanks. Yeah. So we, uh, this wraps up the first hour. This is the, you know, the lesson on the flower of creation. Um, before we move over into the patrons hour, where we're going to talk about Metatron's cube and about the Genesa crystal, Chris and Steve, tell people where they can find you. Okay. They can find us at logosophiabooks.com, where, where, where our books are. And we also have a, um, there's also a page on there with all the URLs of all our you know, links to shows with you guys, and we're uh, monthly on Robert Phoenix's show, um, and Vimeo. and um, and then we and, and Logo Sophie also has a nice little Vimeo channel um, where we're kind of loading up all our videos, trying to get them off of YouTube. Um, so a, a cool. bunch of old classes that we've done. Chris did like a thing, shrines in nature, um, old talks. This is old talk I gave on the. Uh, on the Matrix movies back in, you know, 2004. Oh, cool. So, I'd like to hear that. Wow. So, um, yeah. so that's all on our Vimeo channel. Uh, logo, if you go to Vimeo, not no, Vimeo, and then, and, and type in Logo Sophia, the, 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 our, it should show up. All right, I just curiosity, because this drawing is making me think of that. And since you said you gave a talk on the Matrix, have you ever seen a movie called The 13th Floor? No. Well, wait a minute. Mm, Did we? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm going to bell. So I, I watched it recently and intuitively there's something really significant there for me and my brain can't quite figure out what it is. And I was curious if you'd seen it. So if you get a chance to check it out, we'll talk about it sometime. All right, guys, that wraps right. up the first hour. We're moving over into the patrons hour. If you'd like to join us there, it's patreon.com forward slash off planet media. We'll see you on the other side. This is off planet radio. Thank you.